We got the menu this week, so I'm talking about the menu yet again, but with a reason. I have to be honest, now that I've gotten back into the habit again, this has been what, the fourth week in a row? It's helping. So I'm not sitting here at three o'clock in the afternoon on my day off or at like 11, the days I have to work, saying, oh my gosh, I haven't made anything for dinner. What am I gonna make for dinner? And then I panic. So this has fast once again become a saving grace for me. We're gonna try something new. So now when we did our pantry added, pantry edition, yes, it's first thing in the morning, we talked about cream corn and how you can use it for a recipe. And I mentioned that corn custard stuff. I found the easiest recipe ever. We're going back to all recipes. I'm gonna show you this. It's ridiculously easy. So I'm trying my best to just cut this recipe in half because I only have one can of cream corn left without touching our winter stockpile, which I do not wanna do which, you know, it's going to be a little bit off. I'm going to have more corn kernels in here than cream style corn, but the recipe calls for 15 ounces of corn kernels and I have 12, so that does help. And of course I can't have five eggs, so I'm using three. It's not going to be quite exact, but that's okay. So we'll put the eggs in. Now the recipe is actually ridiculously easy. Oops, no shells. So three eggs, quarter cup of milk. Now it said a third of a cup of melted butter and I put a third of a cup in before I remembered that we were doing this in half. So I guess I'll have to figure out something to do with the rest of that butter. Half of the butter. Actually, I could use that to butter my dish and in this case it'll be an eighth of a cup of cornstarch so a couple of tablespoons I have nothing for you kitty go away no Orson get go Go, oh, everybody, get lost. And I forgot the sugar. Just a couple of tablespoons because it's half the recipe. But that's everything. I bet you this would be really good with, you could put pieces of ham in here, I bet. But we're gonna use some of this butter. Here we go, and into the casserole dish. That'll bake in a 400 degree oven for about an hour. Wow, I wonder how this is gonna come out. I just realized I forgot to show you the custard. <laughs> well, that's all that's left. The texture is pretty good actually, but I think the next time we're gonna, I don't know, zhuzh it up a little bit. It is dry enough that I can get this long delayed spraying done. Loud truck on our little apple trees. So I've got it. Time to take care of this poor little guy because he's just not looking happy at all. So these things aren't that bad. So it's actually the stuff that I have in there, it's like a canola based stuff and it doesn't have any of the really nasty stuff in it but you basically pump it up that's probably enough and then this guy right here it just sprays it see all right i'm gonna go spray the trees all righty he's done so I'm gonna do the other little tree and then the baby apple trees. And uh, yeah, I hate spraying, but unfortunately it needs to get done. Now this stuff though, when you use it, you have to make sure you wash your fruit 
And you also have to make sure you do it just be not before it's gonna rain, which this summer has been a little hard to do, but it's finally done. Well, I have hat hair. <laughs> oh, another morning's work done. Time for this chick to go to work. Fred's going to uh, spray the little tiny trees out in the driveway so that way I don't get any the spray on the house. But in case you're wondering, all those curled up leaves are actually earwigs. There are a lot of earwigs again this year because we haven't had what you call a super freeze and they're just breeding like crazy. So yeah, there's earwigs in the onions, earwigs in the broccoli, ear earwigs in the garlic, earwigs in my trees, a lot of earwigs. I also, because I made more than I actually needed for the apple trees, I sprayed the cherry trees as well, which was a good idea because they were earwigs in the cherry trees. Time for a shower, time to go to work. Yeah, it's a bit windy out here today. It was supposed to be nice today and tomorrow on my days off. Yeah. Then we went from a 10 to 20% chance of rain to super, super low clouds everywhere I went this morning. And apparently it was raining in town and we're probably gonna get rain tomorrow. So yeah, that's uh, how my day's gone. But I did run into the store, we needed some milk and I got this week's pantry item. So here's my little stealth video because today we got our pantry item at Dollarama. Okay, we are at Dollarama. We're talking about basics like salt and spices. So don't rule out the dollar store, guys. I mean, check it out. Lemon pepper seasoning for a dollar. Cinnamon for a dollar. Black pepper is a little more expendy. It's two, but that would last a long time. Now I was looking for Italian, but you can get basil. Basil is a great all around, just everything. So we're gonna grab that today. You also have garlic powder, garlic salt, Onion powder, this stuff is fabulous, by the way. Onion powder, if you can't get onions, it does so much. Um, no. So we're gonna grab two salt for our stockpile and a basil. So another great thing you can get at the dollar store are these smaller bags of pasta. They're a dollar. It's a good brand, Canadian, fabulous brand, but they're only a dollar. Basmati rice, two dollars and fifty cents. This is for just shy of a kilo, so it's about two pounds. Long grain white rice, dollar seventy-five. Same thing. This one's a full kilo. You know, dollar seventy-five. Fusilli with cheese sauce. Penne with spicy tomato sauce. These would be perfect. For a pantry and a lot of people don't like them but you can get things like this they're two dollars and 25 cents it's just meatballs and gravy now the ingredients are a little bit more than I would like but hey if you're in a pinch why not and there's also this one Meatballs with potatoes in gravy. Huh. I didn't even know this one existed. These are also a really, also a fabulous deal at Dollar Store. So, all the different gravy mixes. Hey, poutine mix. Hey, I'm in Canada. Poutine is where it is at. I am just telling you right now. These are also a great addition to a pantry. They are three for a dollar. So what we did for this week's pantry pickup was the dollar store. So you saw, you know, my little stealth videos. I'm, I'm not very good at videoing in a store. I do admit it. But what we had done is we got just 
staples this time. So no ingredients, so we didn't buy cans, nothing like that, no food, so to speak. What we got was, what we got was seasonings. So what we did is, now first of all, I should tell you, these are actually, these are actually done for Dollarama. Um, Heavenly Spices, it's actually labeled for Dollarama. First thing we got is two kilograms of salt. Now the salt, it's a sea salt, which is good. It's an iodized salt, which some people don't like iodized salt. It's not a big deal, but I mean, the body does need some iodine, you know, a little bit. And um, well, I don't use a lot of iodized salt, but I like to have it on hand. It's handy. We did grab one of the black pepper. These were $2 and it is 70 grams. 2.4 ounces. This will last me all winter. I generally use um, pepper grinder, but for some recipes, the fine ground black pepper is just seriously where it's at. Now, the other thing that I got was basil and oregano. Now, the oregano I thought was just more basil on another shelf. Turned out it wasn't. Now, the plan was to get Italian seasoning, the Italian spice blend or herb blend, but they didn't have any. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a hit and miss. Everybody goes to Dollarama, it's great value, and there's quite a few brand name things, like um, French's mustard and ketchup, for they were, I think, two or 250 for the smaller bottles. And then, of course, like the rices, the pastas. I mean, if you're on a very limited budget and, or limited space, the smaller packages of pasta, seriously the way to go. Now, the original plan, like I said, was Italian seasoning and the salt and the pepper. I did get two things of salt and I didn't need any cinnamon and I thought I was gonna get cinnamon. So so if you are just starting, well you might be maybe you just moved out. Maybe you don't have pantry basics. Dollarama in Canada is seriously the way to go. If you're in the US, Dollar Tree, seriously the way to go. I went to a Dollar Tree once the last time I was in the States. Those are great stores. Everything's what? Dollar to a dollar twenty-five, and a lot of it's brand name. So if you got Dollar Tree, man, check it out. But if you are just kind of building your first pantry and you don't want to spend a lot of money, the dollar store is actually a great spot for onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, cinnamon, Italian spice blend if they have it, oregano and basil. Less than 10 bucks, you can have the basics that you need to make some really great food. Very, very easily. They also carry um, the liquid beef stock and chicken stock and also the little cubes. Great way to get it too. I mean, it works well. I was actually pretty impressed with what was actually there. And like I said, don't rule out the dollar store. And I almost forgot. This week's pantry for the winter, six bucks. Herbs and salt, all a dollar. The pepper was two. So I ran out to the garden to see if we had any tomatoes that were ripe and yanked a few carrots for dinner. But these are the guys that were not in a great spot. They're not quite ripe yet, but they'll be all right. Found a couple of peppers, but what I also yanked off are, ah, I buried them, the onion flowers. Check that out. Oops, we dropped a flower. So check it out, guys. These are the onion seeds kind of hard to see. There they are. See? Here's one. Eh. Oh, that was just the casing. So I'm going to see if I can get them out now. The flowers themselves, they actually did pretty well. I might have pulled them too early. I honestly don't know because I've never actually let onions grow for seed before. So I'm going to see if I can get these in a bag. Okay, so that was a fail. I got a few to come out, but I don't think they're quite dry enough. So I'm going to leave them in the bag, opened up, and see if it's, uh, you know, dries out. Time to pick up the yeast. I'm running out. I like this store. Lots and lots and lots of number 10 cans, but yeast must be on the other row. And candy for days. Mm. Lots and lots of candy. Well, 
I have played hooky a little bit this week. I have to admit it. I did finally drop off all that stuff for donation. I was gonna show you and I kinda forgot to bring the camera. So anyway, yeah, I dropped off some of the donation. I still have a lot of stuff to go through. But there's one more thing I need to do this week. And because, well, as you've noticed on our menu plan, we've been doing Fend for Yourself on the one night. And quite frequently, Fred's idea of Fend for Yourself is peanut butter and jam sandwiches. And then he wonders why he's hungry a couple hours later. So I found a meal in a jar that I've done before. And I do not have any. So I've decided we're gonna make this meal in a jar. Basically, it's a soup. It's like a um, it's like a knockoff almost minestrone. It's definitely not traditional minestrone soup. And in my jar, I don't put the pasta because we are making it with green lentils. As soon as I figure out where I put them, oh, there they are. You know something? I forgot to fill the jar up. We're making it with green lentils and green lentils take a long time to cook as opposed to say like red lentils. Now, if you had red lentils, you could just swap them out and the pasta would cook about the same amount of time. And I'm also putting dried veggies in it, which is also something that the original recipe that I had found, who knows way back when, didn't have. I like the dried veggies because I don't have to put as much of like a stock base in than you do in a lot of them. And I also use the low sodium chicken stock. I'm pretty sure when you make minestrone, it's beef stock. I honestly don't even remember anymore. I pretty much use what I have. And right now it's chicken stock. So let me show you how I put together our Tammy version of a minestrone in a jar. Well, first of all, you need jars. Now, I actually use half pint jars. In a full pint, that's a lot of food. And a half pint jar gives me just the amount I need. And the little notebook here where I have the recipe, this is actually written down based on what goes in the jar first. So, being that I emptied out my jar of green lentils, let me go get the bag first. Everything that's gonna go in these five jars are done with measuring spoons, if you can believe it, just measuring spoons. So the first thing that goes into all five jars are two tablespoons of green lentils. There we go. We'll fill up our jar. Oh, not enough room. There we go. All right, our next ingredient two tablespoons of barley. There we go. And next, next are two tablespoons of green split peas. Now, like I said, this is the low salt version of this chicken soup base that I have, but it still works out well. And it is three tablespoons worth. Well, actually, since they're humping up, we'll do two tablespoons because they're rounded and a tiny bit. There we go. Next are some parsley. So that's one and a half teaspoons of parsley that we're going to put in next. Yeah, you know I have parsley in it. I like my parsley. And to be honest, parsley does have a great flavor, guys. Now, one of the things I'm glad I have are these Epicure things because I've got the toasted onion and the minced garlic that are already dried. I don't have to go and get them. Now, the onion is three teaspoons. I know it seems like a lot of onion, but if you don't like that much onion, don't put that much in. I suppose one good healthy tablespoon would work too. And we're only putting in a half a teaspoon of the minced garlic. Maybe not even quite half a teaspoon, maybe not, maybe a quarter and a half, I don't know. Not quite a half a teaspoon. Because the dried garlic, doesn't matter where you get it from, it can be pretty potent stuff. Now we're getting into the flavors. Pepper, 
thyme, and basil. Now these are all a half a teaspoon of basil and just a quarter teaspoon of thyme and pepper. Now, if I was making these with red lentils, I would literally fill the rest of this up with maybe a tablespoon or two of the dried veggies and like shell pasta or macaroni. But since I have the green lentils, I'm not gonna put pasta in here because that pasta will basically turn back to dough by the time those lentils are cooked. So I am going to put extra dried veggies in. One, so I can basically fill up the jar. But I've discovered as well that I really like how it comes out, especially with the low sodium chicken broth. So it is, in my case, four tablespoons. And then from here, that's it. So it doesn't need to be vacuum sealed, nothing like that. The whole plan is that these are not gonna sit on the shelf for who knows how long. So I'll put a lid on these. The way it works is you dump this in a pot with four cups of cold water, up to five, really depends, I suppose. With the dried veggies, last time I did it, I didn't have as many dried veggies, so the four cups was fine. I also had red lentils the last time I did this, and this was a long time ago. But now with more dried veggies, I probably put five cups. About halfway through of these green lentils being almost cooked, I'll probably put in about a quarter of a cup of dried pasta, small pasta, like macaroni, small shells, something like that. Instant soup, and this is more than enough in this little 250 ml half pint jar for two people even three. It really depends on how hearty of a meal you're after. Now, if you're a bigger family, one of these jars, the 500 mil, these will easily feed five to six people with this mix. So you just basically double this. Don't put the pasta in, add like a half a cup of pasta and eight to nine cups of water massive meal for a big crowd. Or in my case, just open two little jars. Instant soup in a jar. And it looks cute too. Doesn't that look cute? <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, I'm hoping that this will make a fend for yourself night that little bit easier for Fred. Another thing too, by the way, guys, if you're vegetarian or vegan, just don't put the stock in. Get a nice veggie stock. You can get some really, really great veggie stocks out there. But don't put a bouillon cube in there because the bouillon cube has got moisture in it. If you need to use a bouillon cube, just pop it on the top, but keep it wrapped up. Yeah, it's been a slack week. <laughs> I did those couple of little uh, stealth videos that you saw. One was that case wholesaler because I needed to get the yeast. Um, someday we'll go in there and we'll do a quick do a good look around. There was quite a few people in there and I'm pretty self-conscious as it is. So yeah, didn't do it. So that's it for me guys. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate each and every one of you. We did cook the other day. Check it out right there. Kind of a weird take on shepherd's pie. I hope you like it because we do. We actually really love the flavor. And me and Yuki right there. So you can go ahead and hit like and subscribe. So you can come along with us as we do our simpler life here on PEI. Bye for now.